Yes, it's finally here, the Nikon D850. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you my initial experiences with the camera. I'm gonna do a quick unboxing, I'm gonna take it out into the field to take some landscape images, and then gonna process them and print them off. So why don't you join me in this video as we put the D850 to the test, and I'll give you some initial impressions of this camera. So as a Nikon user, getting one of these gold boxes is always quite exciting. Let's take a look inside this one. Right, let's get this box open. Let's see what's inside. Right, well, we've got a user manual and warranty. I will actually read the user manual at some point. There's bound to be something useful in there and obviously need to register the warranty. Power cable, handy for charging batteries, obviously. European cable, won't need that. What else have we got? A D850 strap, definitely won't be using that. Looks like a HDMI cable. That'll be the battery charging unit. That's for cable clips. The all important battery, which is good to see, it's the same type as, as the D750. And of course, what we've all been excited about, this will be the D850. Move that out of the way. Let's get this out. With SnapBridge technology, this will be the first camera that I've used the SnapBridge. There she is, the Nikon D850. So here we have it, the Nikon D850. I'm very excited about putting this to the test. So I'm gonna get the batteries charged, find myself a location, and go and take some images. Good afternoon and welcome to Dartmoor. Now it's been a frustrating few days with the Nikon D850. Nothing to do with the camera, all to do with the weather. Um, the weather here in Devon has been not very nice, not very supportive of taking good pictures. Been lots of low cloud, lots of grey cloud, fast moving wind, rain, just generally miserable weather. So I'm really eager to use this camera. So I had a look at my locations map and then I remembered about Benford Falls on Dartmoor. Now, even though it's on Dartmoor, which is obviously very exposed, Benford Falls is down a nice little valley surrounded by trees. So it's kind of protected a little bit from the, the bad weather. And it's also a very pretty location. So I'm gonna get down there, set up the camera, and then I'll tell you about um, how I'm gonna use the D850 to capture an image of Venford Falls. So let me tell you about a couple of the D850 features that I'm gonna to put to use today. The first one is SnapBridge. Now SnapBridge is known for being able to transfer files from your camera to your phone, but I'm gonna use it for two other things. The first thing is relatively minor, but I can synchronize my camera clock with the clock that's on my phone, so my timestamps are always accurate. But the one that's slightly more important to me is the ability to take the GPS data from my phone and directly add it into the EXIF information of each of the photographs I'm taking. So that means when I import it back to Lightroom, they'll all be stamped with the exact location that I took the picture. The other feature that I'm looking forward to using is um, the lower base ISO of just 64. Now on the D750, that was 100. But on the D850, it's 64. So hopefully I should see some uh, better results when it comes to dynamic range. One of the other things that I'm looking forward to improving with the D850 is my long exposure workflow. Now on the D750, I had a fairly basic Nikon uh, remote release, which for anything over 30 seconds, I needed to open the shutter, lock in the shutter release, time it manually, and then unlock it to close the shutter. On the D850, I can leverage uh, one of Nikon's more advanced um, remote shutters. So that allows me to actually dial in the exposure time, open the shutter, the timer will run and then it will automatically close for me. Just a small one and not necessarily specific for the D850, but coming from the D750, this is a big advantage for me. And one final thing on the long exposure, though it's probably not applicable here, is I can now close the eyepiece just with the flick of a switch rather than having to remove the rubber eyepiece and put the black cap over. So that'll make things a little bit easier when it comes to long exposures. And one other feature that I'm looking forward to using on the D850 is when I'm zooming in in live view to check sharpness, I can now split the um, screen display up into two different areas of the image. So this means I can check sharpness in the foreground and the background at the same time. So that should be really useful when I'm dealing with um, depth of field. Okay, I think that's enough tech talk. Let's get on to the serious business of taking some photographs. Mm -hmm. 
So I've taken a few images now with the Nikon D850. It feels great to have finally pressed the shutter button in a real world environment. Uh, just having a look through my images, nice to have the touch screen so you can flip through the images nice and quickly, so that's, that's a real bonus. So for those who are interested in how I've got the camera set up, um, I've got my 16 to 35 f4 lens on at about 24 millimeters. Um, it's at f13. I've also got my Lee Filters polarizer on. This is just to take some of the glare off the water. And the ISO 64, this gives me an exposure time of about 13 seconds. So there's not much more to tell you about the technical aspects of the camera now. I think I'm just gonna have some fun and take some more images. So that's me finished here at Benford Falls. It's been great to finally have got the Nikon D850 out of its box and out shooting landscape images, especially in such a fantastic location such as Benford Falls on Dartmoor. But I'm gonna go home now. I'm gonna process the images and print them off. So I'll see you in just a minute. Okay, as you can see, I'm back home now and I'm ready to start working on those images. So let's start off and talk about image processing. How am I gonna get those images into Lightroom? Well, normally that would just be a matter of sticking the card in and clicking on import. But because I'm an early adopter of the D850, Adobe Lightroom hasn't been updated yet to provide native support for the D850 RAW files. So that leaves me with two options. I can use Adobe's DNG converter and convert them from the native Nikon RAW format into their DNG format, and then I can import those straight into Lightroom. Or because the Adobe Camera RAW module has been updated, and um, that means I can actually work with the RAW files natively in Photoshop. Now, I'm not a big Photoshop person. I'm much more comfortable using Lightroom, so I'm gonna go with the DNG converter option. And that's quite easy to use. I just point it at the folder images and it does a big batch conversion. It gives me a bunch of DNG files at the end and I just import those into Lightroom. As you can see there behind me, I've managed to import my images into Lightroom. I'm pleased to say that the DNG conversion process went very well. I'm also pleased to say that the snap brace technology worked well for me out in the field as well. This was when I could use snap brace to take the GPS data from my mobile phone and add it directly into the EXIF information of the images. When I clicked on the map module when the images were in Lightroom, I could see exactly where those pictures were taken. So I'm gonna process the images now. I'm not gonna do anything too exotic. It'll be shadows, highlights, exposure, sharpness, contrast, that kind of stuff. Um, but once I've got that done, I'll be ready to print them off and I'll come straight back to you. So I've done my image selects, I've processed the images and they're just about ready for printing. But before I get onto that, I just wanna talk about the two images there behind me. So the image on the left, that's a 30 second exposure that was metered correctly, but the image on the right was only an eight second exposure. So I deliberately underexposed the image. Now the reason I did that is because I wanted to see um, later on in post how far I could bring back the shadow detail from an underexposed image. And I'm pleased to say that now that I've got both images processed exactly the same, I couldn't detect any loss of quality in the shadow areas on the underexposed image. So it seems to be quite a bit of leeway in the dynamic range in this camera, which is very promising for low light photography. Okay, so it's time to get the printer warmed up and let's get these images printed off. So I've got my images printed off and I'm really happy with the results. I think the D850 has done an excellent job of capturing Venford Falls. Now Venford Falls is quite a tricky place to shoot, not so much from a compositional point of view, um, but it doesn't get a lot of light, so it's quite dark, there are a lot of shadow areas in the images, but the dynamic range of the D850 has really been put to the test, but yet I've still managed to pull a lot of that detail out. So you probably can't see it so much in the print, but you can certainly see it uh, when you're looking at it on the computer. So if you actually wanna have a look at those images, um, I'll post them up in my blog and I'll stick a link in the video description below. We're just about at the end of this video and my first impressions of the Nikon D850 are that it's a very impressive and very capable camera. There are some great new features and enhancements over my old D750 that I think are going to really help in my photography. No, it's not going to make me a better photographer, but it's certainly going to give me a better chance of getting some of those images. Well, I do hope you enjoyed that video and if you did, please hit the like button and leave me a comment. I really do appreciate it. And I do try and read and reply to every single comment. Now, if you did like this video and you want to see more, 
clicking the subscribe button and also clicking the bell icon. That way you'll get notified every time I post up a new video. But until the next one, I'll see you then.